As you know, guys, we've been to many lagoons. We've been to the Blue Lagoon, the Hedgematic Lagoon, and many other lagoons. And hot spring. But all of these lagoons, as we know, they all need a geothermal plant to heat up the water. And in this video today, we are going to be learning in depth how a geothermal plant works. And we are going to be studying the on power geothermal plant. So, we want to get right started. So here, guys, we in a geothermal plant in the unpowered thermal plant, and why don't we learn more about how it works, right? Okay. So from my understanding, we have this water underground that we drill two kilometers into the ground, and here we have a little water which is geothermal fluid. Geothermal fluid, which naturally becomes steam, and then we suck it um, with twenty bar pressure and pressure. You can, it basically, when something compact comes, like, here there's more pressure because it's very compact and it can't go away. So, this is 20 bar pressure, which is going to suck it all up because that's so much pressure. It puts it into here, and then it goes into a engine that transforms it into energy. Yeah, exactly. We drill down to these two kilometer depth, uh, uh, and then, uh, of course, we get the steam over here, which then uh, goes into the power plant, which uh, generates the electricity. We also generate hot water. As you can see from this diagram over here, we uh, put the geothermal fluid into this tank. Which but how, wait, the geothermal fluid, is it automatically steam or is it? Ah, yeah, uh, we call it geothermal fluid because down below over here it is under so much pressure that it uh, is still in liquid form. But then because there is less pressure down here, now up here, uh, then it becomes steam. Oh, right, right. Yeah. And here, how do we keep it as a liquid? Yes, exactly. Uh, we keep it as a liquid because uh, it's still very hot, but uh, there is uh, not enough heat to transform it into uh, water again. So we cool it. Yes, exactly. And then it goes into this separate uh, the uh, heat exchanging process over here, where we are uh, heating up fresh groundwater, which we send then to the uh, Reykjavik capital area. And what is this stream here? Yeah. Yes, this stream is the geothermal fluid itself, and this stream is just regular groundwater. And then, oh. Yeah, and then we put the geothermal fluid back down into the earth to uh, help nature preserve the renewable right. energy aspect. And what do we learn more about how the engine works here? Right off there. So here you can see the engine, which is called a steam turbine. And basically when we get steam, it goes into here, into the small pipe, it goes up. And then it's going to be going into the, you see these turbines here. It's made in such a way that it's going to make it spin. And then when it makes the turbine spin, it's going to make this axe, a small metal rod in the middle, spin too. And here, over here in this um, small um, oval kind of shape here, you have a, um, copper rings here. And with those copper rings then, when it's spinning in there, it's going to be creating a magnetic field, which is, well, going to be um, conductive to this magnet. And then, obviously, we can use it um, to transfer the electricity. Mm -hmm. right. Exactly, yeah. Uh, these are the uh, high-pressure turbines, which run at about 7 bar pressure. Uh, do you remember from the, uh, the boreholes themselves, we have about 20 bar pressure? Mm -hmm. but it loses uh, some pressure when it comes to the power plant. And so the inlet pressure is about seven bars. And then at the back of the turbine, we have uh, 0 0.1 bar pressure. Yeah. All right. mm -hmm. 
and then it con uh, condenses back into water to be either cooling down the generator itself because it uh, uses a lot, uh, creates a lot of heat or to be uh, re-injected into the ground again. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And here we have the blade well, of the engine that we see over there. And can you explain to us what material this is made for and why we use this and mm -hmm. why is it in this particular shape? Yes, uh, the material it's made uh, of is about 12% uh, chrome, which helps with the corrosion of the turbine blades. Uh, but the rest... That is corrosion. Corrosion, uh, which means that uh, it will not rust away. Yeah, exactly. So uh, we do that to help with the corrosion, otherwise it's uh, uh, carbon steel inside. And but then that... it will be um, very, how do you say, weak, very... Exactly, yes. Uh, and the shape of it is to let the steam come here to uh, go in the other turbine blades at the back. Yeah, oh. so kind of steer the uh, steam itself uh, around yeah, the turbine. Push it and then it'll go around. Exactly, yes. Right. Mm -hmm. All right. Mm -hmm. And can you explain to us why we have this small. Um, yes, uh, here? <laughs> this material over here helps uh, with the uh, precipitation of minerals. It will uh, then uh, the uh, the minerals will collect over here, which then we can uh, clean out more efficiently rather than it would just uh, clog up at the end of the turbine. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. And you might be wondering, guys, how do we drill up to two kilometers down into the earth? Well, we use this this um crusher. This is all motorized, all of these three things, yeah. and scientists around the world and engineers have tried to find the best way, and this is the one that works best, because the, the material comes into here and gets crushed, and also it can get crushed around here. And it's specifically made for when the motors are gonna turn, so you can see guys, these are not gonna hit each other. So it's very interesting to look at all of this very specifically, and it's basically what we use, well, to crush and make hole into the earth, to put the pipes. So yeah, it's very interesting. Here guys, we have a diagram that can help us understand better how it works. All right, so first we take the steam, one of which becomes steam, we put it into here, and then we put it into this container steam. It continues, and it goes all the way down into the engine here, where then it turns the turbine, we can turn and go up and turns it into electricity. And then it goes and, well, powers a nearby house or anything else, like a light. And then, of course, the cycle continues and continues. But why do we want to put specifically geothermal plants in Iceland? Because we know that... There are many countries, and not in every country we have a geothermal plant. And why is it specifically good to have one in Iceland? Exactly, yes. Uh, the uh, most important part of this is, of course, the plate boundary, as it's represented by the orange line over here. The plate boundary means we have two tectonic plates. We have the North American tectonic plate over here in the west, and then we have the Eurasian tectonic plate over here. In the what east. is the difference between Eurasian and Europe? Uh, Eurasian, because uh, Europe is uh, a continent in, uh, you know, uh, yeah, I mean, it should be two continents together because it is on the same tectonic plate, but we separate them uh, just culturally. Yeah. Mm, right. Yeah. Uh, but this plate boundary over here uh, is moving these uh, tectonic plates apart. With that comes volcanoes. With when it gets separated, then it pushes magma up. Exactly, yes. With volcanism, we get more heat. And because the plate boundary itself goes through the whole island, then we have a lot of these geothermal uh, systems that we can utilize. And specifically because there's, like, why does it have so much volcanic activity? Why specifically, why particularly in that? Yes, exactly. Uh, the separation of the tectonic plates produces volcanism, 
But uh, this volcanism does not explain why Iceland exists in the first place. Uh, this thing over here, which is called a hotspot, explains why Iceland exists in the first place. A hotspot is like, if you can imagine a column of really hot magma material coming from really deep down from the earth, uh, and that is more volcanic activity on a place uh, that would not have volcanic activity. And this is where E15 came? Yes, exactly. Uh, the the huge volcano that uh, cancelled all of the flights of Europe and uh, was crashed off. <laughs> but, uh, right. You can also imagine uh, that uh, Hawaii is, for example, also a hotspot. You would not think that Hawaii would be a volcanic uh, island, but because they have the hotspot phenomenon, then they have a lot more volcanic activity. Mm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yeah, no problem.